Hey everyone, welcome to Craft Hive. Tracking or match move in VFX is one of those things that you'll have a hard time explaining to non-VFX folk. If this is your job, you'll know firsthand what I mean if you ever tried to explain what you do to friends and family. In this video, we're going to attempt to demystify what match move is and its use within the VFX workflow. Mainly, a match move artist will be asked to perform one of three major tasks camera tracking, object tracking, or roto animation, also known as matchmation. There are a number of tools that can be used to perform these tasks depending on the needs of the shot. Some basic tracks can be handled directly in your compositing package like Nuke or After Effects or Mocha Pro. Some more general 3D applications even offer some tracking tools for some simple 3D tracks like Blender and Cinema 4D. But when you need the complex solves, you'll want to bring in the big guns, the specialized tracking software. 3D Equalizer is an industry standard for this kind of work. It's incredibly powerful, capable of producing really tight tracks, and offers a ton of useful tools to really simplify and speed up the tracking process. PF Track and Synthize offers similar features and can be used as an alternative to 3D Equalizer. If the work is simple enough, you might be able to get away with some simple 2D track, which is where keeping things in Nuke or AE might seem interesting. Otherwise, if the shot has enough parallax movement with lots of motion, you're going to need to look at the more dedicated 3D tracking packages. Camera tracking is the starting point of all that beautiful VFX CGI magic. It's where the real world and the digital touch for the very first time. Without it, you've basically got some renders randomly plastered over your footage, with none of the movement matching. Simply put, camera tracking is the process of recreating your real world camera in your 3D software. To start this process, you'll generally want a few things. Obviously, you're going to need some original footage, which is referred to as the plate. To make things easy for yourself, you'll also want to know some information ahead of time, such as the camera and lens used, some footage of a distortion grid, and if you're really lucky, you'll even be able to get your hands on a LiDAR scan of the set used in the shot. The next step is to track 2D points on the footage. A tracking point can be anything from a rock on the ground to a tracking marker on a green screen. The key is that the point is small, high contrast, and stays in the same position throughout the shot. Depending on the level of parallax in your footage, it may be required to track separate points for the foreground, midground, and background for the tracking software to get a complete picture of your camera's position relative to its environment. Once the points are tracked, that data is used to calculate a motion path for the camera to follow. If you have the LiDAR available, you can then project the points onto the LiDAR to get a more accurate camera solve and to line up the 3D model of the set with the camera. Otherwise, you'll likely want to create some rough proxy models of the set yourself to get an idea of where objects lie in the scene. With a good camera solve, your 3D models will look like they actually exist in the footage, provided that the model doesn't suck or the textures and the shading and the lighting, etc. Object tracking, on the other hand, as the name suggests, is the process of tracking objects within the footage as opposed to the camera. Object tracks are used to replace or enhance an object that already exists in the footage. There are multiple reasons for it. Let's say the element needs some magical effects on it, or if it needs to be extended or enhanced in any way. By tracking an object, we're able to fool the viewer's eye by closely matching the object's motion, or even track a nearby object to match that movement. Last, but definitely not least, the process of roto animation. This task poses a unique challenge that demands patience skill, and proper plan. Roto-Anim is used most of the time to match the exact movement of a subject's head, hands, feet, and many times of the full body. Roto-Anim could be needed for something as simple as gunshot wounds that need to be cheated because we obviously can't shoot actors. Or it could be used for something extreme like matching the actor's body movement in every single shot in order to replace their costumes, or entirely transform them into human-animal hybrids. Why are we debating whether the Earth is flat? Dude, they're keeping, they have human-animal hybrids. If you've ever been tasked with one of these we salute you. It's usually long hours of watching the same footage at extreme close-up, toggling between frames, hand animating, and fighting against animation curves and constraints. Don't get me wrong, it's a fascinating thing. I mean, it's responsible for allowing an enormous team to fully trust that Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man suit will always match his movement perfectly, or removing Ralph's nose by matching the head motion to a T. If you found this video at all interesting and would like to know more about VFX and CG workflows, let us know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, bye!